we need to close the loopholes we have going right now to the big oil companies. We've got to do that and invest that money right here in the district in cleaner, greener, renewable energy. We need to invest that money to make sure that we're cleaning up the air, that we're holding people accountable who are coming in here and polluting it. Look, for me, climate change is not just real. It's an urgent issue of our time. Now, in this district, thank you. In this district here, the word climate change, people don't really associate what that means. We talk about it as a public health crisis because in Wilmington, kids walk around with inhalers around their necks. And people tell me, Nanette, that's just the way of life. I said, no, it's not. We need to stand up. Who is going to fight for these people? True story. And this is where I start diverting and telling you more than I should. True story. A month before the primary in June, we went to do photos in the district for mailers. We went down to Wilmington in front of an oil refinery to take a photo. I can't tell you how quickly the security officers for the oil companies came out. Quickly. And started asking questions. What are you doing here? They don't want us taking photos anywhere near the site. Because they know I'm not going to be shy about holding people responsible and speaking up. We found out later, a month later, they called the police, by the way. A month later, the FBI was looking into this. Now, can you imagine for a moment, imagine for a moment, you live right next to these facilities and you're undocumented. Do you know how many undocumented people there are here? There's a lot. Or imagine that you are trying to get citizenship here, or you've got a green card. When I was a kid, my mom said to me, Nanette, we don't ask questions. We don't question authority. We're just lucky that they let us be here. And that, for me, has always been like, no, mom, we have rights. We speak up. And that has always been really what's motivated me to make sure we're fighting for those who need a voice the most. But it shouldn't be a time, because it's, we've seen it more and more happen now, that the largest corporate donors are getting all the attention. You know, homelessness is a really big problem in the district. And in San Pedro, it's huge. I know firsthand it wasn't like that before. The explosion has been just phenomenal. And we've seen it go into Compton. And we've seen it go across the city and in, into the district here. You know, we need to make sure we're taking care of our veterans. We need to make sure that we're investing in mental health services and making sure that there's affordable housing. People tell me right now they have Section 8 housing certificates, but they can't find a place either way. These are issues that are so important. And people tell me, Nanette, you would never be, want to be on the Veterans Committee in Washington. I said, why is that? There's no money in that. This is the problem. When you have people who are fighting instead to be on committees for dollars, when you don't have a lobby group that's spending enough money, people tell me that about the environment. They said, Nanette, there's no money in the environment. You're on the wrong side of this issue. I said, what do you mean? Oh, you know, activists, maybe they'll come and walk, but they're not going to give you money. And that is the problem with politics today. So in me, you have a very stark difference. There couldn't be a bigger contrast. And I'm tell, I'll tell you, we're proud that the LA Times and the Daily Breeze both did their research. And they talked about making sure we had somebody who was principled, somebody who had a coherent vision for this district, somebody who wasn't just going to go and fight for the largest corporate donors. And it's not just the oil industry. Go look at the tobacco money this man gets. And this is a Democrat. You know, when I was a kid, a Democrat fought for democratic values. For me, that was a, we're all in this together. We're helping each other. We're going to fight to protect Social Security and Medicare. We're going to fight for those who need a voice the most. That we're going to stand up to big dollars. It's different now. And in California, it's very hard for Republicans to get elected. So what you've seen happen is a split in the Democratic Party. You've seen more Democrats take money from oil money and tobacco money than ever before. I mean, think about this for a second. My opponent is the top recipient of oil money in Sacramento, more than Republicans. If that doesn't tell you something about the break in the Democratic Party and the differences in our values, I don't know what does. So education is huge. Protecting. Social Security and Medicare, but not just that, we need to expand it. We need to expand it to include things like eye coverage, dental coverage, hearing aids. These are the issues of our day. 
And I could go on and on and talk about the school to prison pipeline that's happening right here in this district that nobody wants to talk about. African American kids are being taken out of school as a way for punishment when their white counterparts are not. And this is African American kids number one and Latino kids number two. So in a district here where only 60% are graduating from high school and 10% are going to college, we are creating this cycle. It's the school to prison pipeline and we need to make sure we're talking about it and we're fighting up for our students right now. This is the civil rights issue of our era. Not to mention what we see happening right now where you have unarmed people, black men, being killed on our streets. Police accountability is something that is not just something I talk about. This is something that I feel strongly about. Now, when I was on the city council, and you can ask uh, Mio here, I wasn't shy about making sure we were questioning our police departments. I am a big supporter of police because they are there to protect and serve. But we need police accountability. Absolutely, these, these incidences need to be investigated and there needs to be transparency. And that is something that is often lacking, where you, don't, you see videos that don't want to be released and we understand why. But there are so many issues and I can really go on and on and on and talk about them, but I don't. I want to make sure to leave an opportunity to keep this open for Q&A. Let me spend just a moment of time to tell you about the status of the race, okay? In the primary election, I was warned, Nanette, people are going to be put on the ballot that are meant to just dilute your vote. I said, what do you mean? Well, this is a practice they do in Compton a lot. Oh, women will be on the ballot. More Latinos will be on the ballot. So there's not a true, a true look at how the matchup is, ha is going. What we found happened was the people who came in second, third, fourth, and fifth place in the primary all had something in common. The raw Latinos. They were all Democrats and combined made up 44% of the vote. Not a single one of those other people opened a committee to raise money or spend money. One of them was a convicted felon and she got 6% of the vote. <laughs> Had no issues, didn't run on anything, didn't even return a phone call when the LA Times called to ask for an endorsement meeting. That is what's happening in this district. Unfortunately, people go into the voting booth and they'll pick a name they like. They'll pick a gender they like. We want people to be informed, why? Because on the issues, on the record, we win. Hands down, we win. So that happened in the primary, but we had a poll we put out about eight weeks ago. The poll had this race within four points, a virtual tie. So what does that mean? <laughs> that means that you could be the difference in this race. That means that you picking up the phone and calling for us, you picking up sheets and walking for us, can make the difference. Our average contribution, one quarter, was $99. Now, we're still working on trying to get to $27. <laughs> but we just got the endorsement of our revolution, the Bernie Affiliated Group. <laughs> we just got the endorsement of the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. It's a group tied with Elizabeth Warren. We got Democracy for America that's been fighting on progressive issues and progressive values. And it just keeps adding up. We've gotten labor on board, the postal workers, who by the way, the number one opponent for them are payday lenders. My opponent is a big champion for the payday lending industry. That's an industry that preys on the very community here that's the most vulnerable. So, and we could talk about the payday lending industry, a whole, a whole nother time. But right now, we are in a strong position to win this race. We have been working very hard. I get about five hours of sleep a night. <laughs> We've been working hard. It's raising money. And don't get me wrong, you need money to win elections. This is why $27 at a time, that money adds up and it's helpful. So if you can help us with your time, please do. If you can help us with your dollars, please do. It doesn't have to be a lot. If you give $5, $10, in-district money is very hard to get. You're lucky if you can raise $20 out of Compton. That requires us to really go across the entire country. But we have people in Massachusetts, 
We have people in Florida, in Texas, San Francisco, who care about democratic values that are progressive. They care about those who are not taking the dirty money. And some people have said to me, oh, Nanette, you would take the oil money if you got it. I said, you know what, we've refunded money. We have refunded money as soon as I get whiff that this is dirty money, it's going back. Because we're going to do this with the power of the people. And we're going to do this how we're doing it now. And there are lots of people right now who are energized. And I need you on my team. I need you to put up a lawn sign. I need you to talk to your friends. So thank you so, so much. Ballots are going to drop. And that's the real election day. On October the 10th is when they get mailed out. Don't let anybody fool you. It's not November 8th. November 8th is the poll voter day. But the election really starts here on October the 10th. So please, there is a sense of urgency. You know, we got a handful of days before the first ballots really start to drop. Thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate it. Okay, I'll take this off now.